This is Joseph Coco. I'm at Ape 2014 on behalf of Becky Hilburn's art process blog. Keep on trucking, Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Ben. Hi, my name is Ben Zito. Uh, I am a self-published comic book artist. Uh, my current work is Saga Jane and Skull Bunnies, Volume 1. Okay. Uh, as a side note, it's currently being uh, displayed at the Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco. Awesome. And what's been your experience uh, producing Skull Bunnies? Uh, was it always intended to be a hardbound uh, volume? No, actually, it started out as a uh, as, as a toy, as a concept for a toy, because I was really into collecting the kid robot and like uh, Kubrick stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, but eventually, I wanted to like explain what the toy came from. So that's when I started making comics as a companion piece to the toy. Oh, okay. So, um, were you planning on producing like a, a wider variety line uh, of, of the toy, or uh, you, it was just a, a, a one-off sort of thing, and, and the story you felt like gave the toy more depth? Uh, the story gave the toy more depth, but in turn, I got more interested in telling more stories. Yeah. So the, the toys kind of went to the wayside, and as I focused more on telling more stories with the characters. Yeah, and I definitely think toys and comics go pretty well together, not just uh, in like the mass production Marvel DC sort of way, but I've known several um, comic artists who also just dabble in producing uh, toys. Um, so what was uh, your, your background? Um, was, in, was in toys originally? Oh, no, it was always comics. Okay, okay. So what started me into the... Uh, uh, what inspired me to become a comic book artist was the Ninja Turtles. I was yeah. a fan of the cartoon series, but in like uh, fifth grade, someone introduced me to like uh, the black and white comics, and when I saw that, it was like totally different from what I'm used to. They weren't eating pizza. They didn't have like you know individual colored bananas. They're all red and all hardcore looking. Eventually, they did, they did eat pizza in the comics, but it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, the comics blew my mind. I was like, wow, what is this? It's so intense. It's like I felt like my art. Like if I was an art baby, I grew up that day. <laughs> it's like my art uh, puberty or something. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, uh, of, of our generation have been inspired by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, so, I mean, just as a quick aside, what do you think of the, the new series? Uh, the cartoon? or the Yeah, the, the cartoon or the comic. I haven't gotten a chance to watch the new cartoon. Okay. But I appreciate how, like, it's staying true to the, like, it's kind of, like, the original cartoon series is pretty corny and kind of cheesy. Yeah. Actually, the first, like, uh, the first pilot episode was awesome. And then later on, it got really cheesy. But it was fun. You know, it's for children. And, you know, you don't have to, like, make hardcore things for children. It's not insulting. Yeah. It's, it's not as serious as, like, the, the most recent movie, which in, I knew a lot of people from our generation who were very disappointed in that. Oh, no, but, um, I loved it. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, I haven't seen it yet, so. I, was, I mean, sure, the nose and the, the aesthetics, the physical aesthetics of the turtles changed. But I, I don't know. I got used to it. The personality is really, like, uh, the, like the way the, the personality of the characters of the turtles it just really stood out. I think they did a great job in that. The story, like, yeah, the story is ridiculous. It's about rich people trying to get, become more rich. But <laughs> anyway, sorry, guys. I didn't want to um, So can you tell me a little bit about the process you went through to uh, make a toy? Did you know people um, in that industry at the time? Or you just kind of kind of started fiddling with uh, materials? So what ended up happening was I had a really good friend. She was a, a toy maker, like a stuffed plushie toy maker. Yeah. And I always, like, uh, admired how she made uh, plush toys. And then uh, people always ask, uh, you know, the skull is like, uh, when the skull is gonna be like a plush tour or something? Like that. Cause they, they, I told them about the original like uh, resin figures I was casting. Yeah. And then some people like say, why not make it like a stuffed animal? It'd be really cute. Like, oh, that's a good idea. And then I met another friend who's currently uh, producing stuffed animals. Uh, she actually introduced me to the idea of uh, self-producing your own plush toy. Awesome. So, so I guess by I hand, make a toy. <laughs> Uh, like with the with the sewing machine or oh, no no I'm not I'm not very talented with a sewing machine. Uh, you can only like take two pieces of fabric and sew them together to make a flat. <laughs> but to get that this dimension, I would uh, yeah i never I wouldn't I wouldn't know where to begin. So I actually like just uh, found a company online. Yeah. The internet has everything. <laughs> it's like the Matrix. <laughs> okay. And, um, I just provided there with a turnaround, which is like one back and side view. Yeah. And then uh, they came up with this. It's like pretty awesome. Okay. 
Um, so you were talking about the Comics Art Museum a little bit. Can you tell me about your experience with getting your work into that? Oh, so uh, one of my good friends, Debbie Huey, she's a comic book artist that makes a bumper book. She's actually right there. Okay. Um, she um, she was approached by one of the, uh, the curator at the Cartier Art Museum to know to like uh, for any suggestions for like uh, indie spotlights. Awesome. So she um, my name came up and they're like, yeah, why not? Let's uh, let's, let's look at Ben's work and see if. Uh, that's really exciting. I, I haven't actually made it out to the Comics Art Museum yet. It's been on my list uh, to do in San Francisco. Oh, but I was I was excited when I saw your work was in there. Not necessarily because I'm that familiar with it, but because you had more of an anime sort of style. So I was like, not only does this museum actually have comic books and comic pages, but they're willing to accept something that's like obviously intended for commercial consumption and not just some fine art pedestal, essentially. Oh, yeah. I think the Carpentry Art Museum just, like, just wants to... like. Uh, and, uh, just like uh, highlight all art in general. Yeah. Regardless of like uh, its purpose, is it like you know, for, like if it was made for commercial, or if it was made for someone's personal. They just want to like share it with everybody. So that's the great thing about the cartoon. It exposes all this great work to people who may not have like found it on their own. Okay. And can you tell me um, uh, your experiences with Ape? How long have you been coming here? Um, off and on since I, get, I believe 2002. <laughs> Okay, oh, wow. wow. Several years now. I mean, there may have been like uh, a few years where I've taken a break. Uh, so it's just uh, a convention that you've been hitting regularly yeah. since then? It's like the only convention where I feel like, uh, as an independent comic book artist, I just, I just feel like I belong here. There's a lot of conventions out of broad scope, like, you know, uh, like the general comic book convention or craft fair. Yeah. I don't really quite, I just like, I feel like I'm just going to go there to do like be part of it, just to participate, but Ape is like, I feel like that's my home convention. Like, you know, yeah, if conventions were like a hometown, I would feel Ape would be my hometown. Yeah, I, I can see that. Your fans know you're going to be here. Uh, the yeah. general audience knows what to expect and like your work, your, your class of work is accepted at this convention. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to be. I've seen quite a bit of anime inspired things and no one walks by and like gives it skunk face or anything. In fact, I've seen a lot of people get very excited about it. So even if it's not fan art, even if it's original artwork that they I might not recognize. That, uh, I struggle with that, uh, with that experience. That's why my name, my comment Comic book uh, company publishing name is called Black Street Comics. Yeah. Because I was, I, I grew up like loving a mainstream comics, which I rather not really because Ninja Turtles was not a mainstream comic, it was an independent comic. Yeah. I loved that. And then I transitioned to the Marvel DC, eventually Image. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the Image. I loved Image in the beginning, but later it just got ridiculous. And then right now Image is great because they're publishing a bunch of like a special stuff that like are indie comics. Right? Yeah. So, and then I got into manga and then I really loved like um, the, the, the pacing and the, and the subject matter in manga that you don't get here. So I just love comics in general. Yeah. Uh, and then I hopefully my, my style tried to encompass both of them. Because when I started drawing, a lot of people said, oh, it's just like uh, you're, you're like hardcore anime fans, like, ugh, you're just an American trying to draw, rip off an anime style. And then the American <laughs> I was like, ugh, you're just, you're just anime style. <laughs> yeah, like, that happens okay, a lot I'm, on the like, East Coast. War between like the two like audiences, like they don't, one people think I'm not good enough to be like anime, and one people think, oh, you're too anime. <laughs> like, where do I go? <laughs> Did you get that same experience when approaching editors, or have you talked to many editors? Uh, a lot of editors like, got uh, rejected my work in the beginning. Based, okay, because based I'm, on your anime influences? And, and okay. Yeah. I, I'm not a very good artist. I, it took me a long time to get into this. Okay. And that's the thing. People might get discouraged when they first start out because uh, you don't have perspective yet. Yeah. You, when you start out, you, you're, you're drawing and you probably think, oh, if you think it's the best you've ever done, then you think everyone might think that's the best. But it's not true. You have to like, you have to like, you have to really work hard at it. And over the years, you'll get perspective. You have to look back at your work and compare it to what you do now and be honest with yourself. If it's changed, then you know, is it a good change, a bad change? Are you happy with it? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like different like uh, I don't know, like uh, uh, factors. Like personally, I believe if you're happy with what you're doing, just do it. And uh, but if you want to like uh, if you want to be commercially successful, study the people that you admire and compare yourself. It's like an athlete. If you want to be a really good at your sport, you're gonna work hard. You can go to the gym. You put 
yeah. time. You have to practice constantly. Not everyone is just talented in art naturally. I mean, some people are. Yeah. If you're not, then you got to work at it. Well, I think either way you have to work because, yeah. I mean, if an editor sees that you can't produce work regularly, then they're not going to give you a job, even if you are quite skilled. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I've noticed you've built quite a brand around Skull Bunny. Um, I was wondering if you'd planned on continuing that into the future, uh, as having that as, like, your um, main icon and the representation of Ben Sato, or if you... Uh, at the moment, I want to just... I want to do... Because it's fun. It's like... I've yeah, it's I've had definitely several, recognizable. I had several, like, stories that I showed up with. I had, like, these grandiose ideas. And, you know, at first, I, I you get, like, all pumped up. Okay, I'm going to draw. I feel like a few issues. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is exhausting because it's so hard to tell an uh, epic story by yourself. So, so Scope was, uh, was an exercise, actually. Um, like I said in the beginning, it was, like, to supplement my toy. But, um... But it became a good exercise in like just uh, doing like uh, small small comics like, where like individual like just self contained story. Yeah. And then I got comfortable with that uh, with that format. So I wanted to do a few more stories, but at the same time I have to do, uh, like I don't want to end scope base, but before I do I wanna tell the origin of where my main character Usagi Gain came from and how she became the person that she is. It's okay. Well, um, would you have any advice for someone who's considering coming to Ape or tabling at Ape for the first time? Oh yeah, just, um, just, just be passionate about what you do. <laughs> okay, uh, and where could we find your work online? Um, you can follow me on Tumblr or Instagram, just uh, look up Ben Frito. Or uh, maybe on Facebook, uh, just look up Skull Bunny on Facebook. Alright, well thank you Ben Seto, I hope you have a good ape.